Cho Seng. Seng Cho, 480 to 560 AD, was feeble, slightly built, and often bullied by the other monks who were resident at the Shaolin Temple. Greatly peeved by all of this, Seng Cho went one night into the temple's great hall, where there stood before him a massive statue of the Buddhist military god, Jin Gang Shen. If you can hear me, great one, whispered Seng Cho in prayer, please help me. Make me strong and big so that I can defend myself when next the other monks chide me. This continued for further, for several further nights, with Seng Cho praying alone to the fearsome looking statue. Finally, after almost a week had passed, Seng Cho's prayers were answered. What's the matter with you, mouse? mocked Jin Gang Shen in great booming tones suddenly appearing in his divine form before the cowering monk. The other monks were always mocking me. They called me weak and useless, protested Seng Cho in a faltering voice, wholly unable to meet the god's fiery gaze. But you are weak and you are useless, laughed the god, swiping Seng Cho around the head. It was the mildest of blows, and yet it knocked the monk flying. I know I am, nodded Seng Cho as he picked himself up slowly off the floor, tears appearing. That's why I need your help to change. So obvious was his misery that Jin Gang Shen felt something stir in his otherwise hardened heart. So be it, said the god solemnly. You'll, you'll help me, stammered Seng Chao, wiping his eyes. In a way, answered Jin Gang Shen critically, but first you must help yourself. How do you mean, master? The monk wanted to know. You must eat flesh. Seng Chao recoiled as though stung. Master, he said breathlessly, you must know that it is forbidden for a monk to eat the meat of any creature. That is a sacred commandment to us. Eat flesh, shrugged Jin Gang Shen, or be damned all your life. There is no other way. I, I cannot, Seng Chor said miserably. You ask too much. At once a great blade appeared in one of the god's hands, its blade pressed against the monk's throat. In the god's other hand was a great sinewy lump of meat. Eat this, said Jin Gang Shen, or die by this blade. You asked me for help, and now you must accept what I tell you. There is no other way, save for that of death. Hesitingly, hesitatingly, Sing Chor reached out for the meat. He felt sick to the stomach as he began to chew, and yet it tasted considerably better than he'd expected. And, and all at once he felt a warm glow start in his arms, legs and chest. Suddenly he realised that he was standing at least a foot taller than he had before, and he looked gratefully at Jing Gang Shen. I have granted you your wish, said the god, the meat and sword now absent. Never trouble me again. And with that, all that remained was the statue of its fixed, fathomless gaze. Dawn was breaking as Seng Chor returned to the dormitory he shared with the other monks. They were starting to awaken, yawning and washing with the aid of a water jug as they prepared themselves for the morning's prayers. Seng Chor, little maggot, where have you been? The usual tirade of abuse stopped the moment the monks took notice of the fact that Seng Chor was a good foot taller than he stood before, and that his arms and legs were now like tree trunks. Never mock me again, said the monk quietly. Do you understand? Yes, yes, said the other monks together, wondering just how such a transformation could have occurred overnight. They knew better than to ask, however. From that moment on, Seng Cho became one of the Shaolin Temple's most skilled martial monks. He was fond of jumping onto rooftops and lifting great weights, while his friend Hu Guang, who hadn't been given any special powers by Jin Gang Shen, could apparently kick a shuttlecock 500 consecutive times with his feet while standing on a thin iron beam suspended several feet in the air.